As we discussed in our lessons on Ethernet, Ethernet uses CSMA CD as its access method. This means anyone can attempt to access the network at any time, which can result in data collisions. The idea behind Token Ring was to prevent these data collisions. So, Token Ring's access method requires users to get permission before they transmit. This permission comes in the form of a token. A token is a small packet of data that constantly circles the ring. When a user needs to send traffic, it must first capture the token. This way, two devices can never attempt to transmit at the same time. Remember how we compared Ethernet CSMA CD to a room full of courteous students? Well, Token Ring works like a room full of students with a microphone being passed around. You can only speak if you have the microphone. Well, let's see how this works in operation. First, you have an operating network ring with a token rotating around it. Then, one of the stations determines it has data to send. The station captures the token the next time it passes by. Essentially, it grabs and holds the token. While holding the token, this station generates its data onto the network. This data circulates around the ring, and the destination station recognizes the information is addressed to it. Now, and this is important, the destination station does not remove the information from the ring. It only takes a copy of the data. The data itself continues to circle the ring. In addition to copying the data, the destination station also adds information onto the last part of the original packet. This information is used to tell the sending station the message was received. It's an acknowledgment of the message. The data continues around the ring back to the source, and it's the sending station's responsibility to remove its data from the ring. As it's removing its data from the ring, it also checks to see if the message was acknowledged. Finally, the station releases the token back onto the ring so someone else can use it.